Joining me tonight is Recastled CEO Kosha Gator. Kosha, let's start with media giant AP, who today posted this. They said, we recommend avoiding general and often dehumanising the labels such as the poor, the mentally ill, the French, the disabled, the college educated. Instead, use wording such as people with mental illness and use these descriptions only when clearly relevant. We can't say the French. Do we say people feeling Frenchy or people experiencing Frenchness? What, what exactly is the correct term? <laughs> that was probably the, the funniest one, Rita. Great to be with you as always. And that, and I, I feel bad the French are often the butt of the joke, um, and I, I don't know why. But look, this is now we've, we've moved on from pronouns into articles, which is the. And uh, what it, while it's funny and, um, you know, funny to laugh at, it is, it does show what, what's going on here, which is control of language. And, you know, you've talked about this a lot. George mm -hmm. Orwell put it best. If you control language, you control thought. And that's what this is about, constricting and restricting vocabulary as much as possible to make everybody's opinions, thoughts, viewpoints, descriptions of the world as we see it as uh, limited as possible. And that's kind of, I think, what's underpinning this uh, sad yet funny story. Oh, but the whole thing, you're so right. It, it, it is, uh, and it's AP. These are the people, the mob that are trusted to do fact checks that see articles and even memes removed from, from Instagram, Facebook. So, and this is their thinking. This is where they're at. It's a worry. Now, let's go to New Zealand and see how sensitive and kind their media is. I mean, this is the same media that bristles at any criticism of St Jacinda, no matter how warranted. But let's see how they talk about former US President Donald Trump. OK, Donald Trump's here, so let's, let's say Donald Trump... It doesn't hurt. Put him down there. Oh, does it have, got, a, does well, it have like a laser? Go, not, well, I'm, I'm just out of the not way. sure it's actually that far. I feel like there needs to be a laser on this thing. Or do you, well, okay. this is... This is... Oh! Hey! That was huge. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta yeah. get rid of these guys. They're coming into our country. Uh, yeah. 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 See, look. So yeah. get a little, uh, a little doll, a little Donald Trump doll. Yeah. And go hard. Oh dear me. Uh, I do feel sorry for New Zealanders having to watch that, though, Kosha. It's not exactly entertaining. And it's so 2016. I have to say, there. Um, you know, yeah. this just illustrates that the Trump. Uh, and Trump derangement syndrome really is a powerful force and it still exists two plus years after he left office in a country that couldn't be geographically further away from the United States and that's still, um, you know, what they do. And uh, uh, I think it's telling. Maybe they got ratings or clicks for it, but um, I think it's tired. They should probably find a, a new nemesis to throw darts at. <laughs> Well, they've got some worldwide mocking over it because that clip has gone viral. Now to some more lefties losing, at this time the Channel Islands, somewhere we don't go often. Uh, this is peak woke madness here. This is from the government of Jersey who tweeted this campaign for cervical screenings. Let's see if they left anyone out. It says, if you are a transgender man, a gender non-conforming person or assigned female at birth and with a cervix, you can book your free cervical screening today. Kosha, did, did they forget to mention, I don't know, women in a campaign about cervical screening and presumably cervical cancer? You know, we talked about earlier, Rita, how one goal is to restrict and constrict language as much as possible and limit pronouns and articles and all that. And then on the other side, we've got this unlimited description of everything but, as you say, a woman, which um, everybody sees what it is. It's, again, comical. But this is showing, actually, the real-world effects of this culture war, even if people might be willing to say, you know, maybe we want to be more inclusive and understand trans rights and all that. It has implications now to the taxpayer in terms of who's going to fund this stuff, to the gynecologists who are going to have to perform the screenings on a, a range of humans who may or may not have biological cervix cervixes and um, and on and on it goes. So uh, it's funny and again, uh, and comical, but a bit troubling in terms of like indicating just where the culture is shifting. And, and most people, I think, even if we see the absurdity of it, sort of look the other way. And um, it's kind of scary to think where this ends. 
Well, yeah, people have got to wake up. This stuff is not just the fringe. It's not just happening at university campuses. This is government agencies. It is everywhere. Media are embracing it, and certainly the corporations are embracing it. Now, let's go to uh, some bug eating. We know the climate change alarmists and the elite of the World Economic Forum, they've been pushing people eating bugs instead of meat for some time. It's supposed to be better for the environment. And now the celebrities have joined the campaign. I recommend them to anyone. Dinner. It's actually really good, the flavor. Mm. Okay. Teriyaki marinated. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's doing it. What are you doing? This is a powder derived from the mealworm, and it's a insect protein just been approved by the EU. If we make this switch, it's a huge, huge uh, intervention. Goodness me, Iron Man looks a bit iron deficient there, but uh, one would hope when people see just how dense so many celebrities are, they would stop following their advice. Here is a classic example of a lefty who regularly loses it, Chelsea Handler. She's very outspoken on political issues and social issues, but here she is making a startling revelation. I didn't know, and this is true, I didn't know until I was 40 years old that the sun and the moon were not the same thing. They're not sending their best kosher. She did not know till the age of 40 that the sun and the moon weren't the same planet. Uh, she gets 10 points for honesty. I'll give her that. She said that on live late night television. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you make a very astute <laughs> point, Rita, that um, this elevation of celebrity that has really amplified in, in modern times in, in the culture is quite jarring in a way when you think about that. You know, these they may be talented, creative people, but uh, they're not exactly the most intelligent people. Most of them drop out of high school. Most of them sort of uh, just find themselves in, in this industry where they're not exactly using brain cells all the time. And yet the culture just has so much adulation for them, maybe beauty and wealth and status and those things are seductive and that's probably why. And they've always been useful idiots, I think, for the people really running the agenda to, to use and be the face of because of that adulation. And so I'm not surprised we're seeing the insect stuff and we'll probably see more of it as the, the, the powers that be want to push that, the climate mm. activists want to push that narrative. You will see more and more of these people trying to pretend that it's uh, this amazing thing that we all have to do. And unfortunately, I think a lot of people will follow in the footsteps of celebrities because they, they do look up to them. They do look up to them. You ask young kids, what do you want to be when you're grown up? And a lot of them say they want to be famous. That seems to be the goal, not actually achieving something. Kosher Gator, thank you so much for joining me.